Welcome back to First Time Fish Keeper. I hope your aquarium's running well and that your fish are thriving. This week, we'll take a brief look at fish disease and introduce some fish to help with the cleaning. By now, you'll have seen that our aquaria are basically powered by bacteria and natural processes. Whether we like it or not, we're basically just keeping water. Keep that water well and your pets should thrive. But this isn't always as easy as it sounds. Sometimes things happen that stress the fish and that's when they can become unwell. Stress for a fish can come from a number of sources and most of these are environmental. Failed heaters can cause low temperatures, poor water quality can test them and bullying can also be an issue. Many people forget that fish are complex animals with social behaviours that are innate and sometimes quite antisocial. By watching your pets, you can determine what is normal behaviour. A healthy fish should swim with perky fins and show an interest in its surroundings. It should be interested in food and will normally be interacting with others of its kind, if it's a social species. Fishes that sit in a corner, swim abnormally or hold their fins clamped close to their body are often unhealthy. As not all fish swim actively, it's important to know what's normal for the fish that you're watching. Loaches often lie on their sides. Nocturnal catfish doze upside down under logs and betters will lounge near the surface, resting on plant leaves. All of these would be worrying traits for danios or platys to exhibit. The first thing to do if your fishes are acting strangely is to test the water. Most problems are caused by poor water quality issues. If all the parameters are within acceptable levels, have a look at the temperature and correct any other issues as you find them. If your fish are unwell due to temperature or water quality issues, adding medications may cause more problems than it solves. As vets don't often have much dealing with aquarium fish, consider taking a video or some photos along to your favourite fish retailer, together with your water test results or a sample. Please don't be tempted to scour the internet looking for clues and home remedies. This is an animal welfare issue and prompt and correct diagnosis is your duty as a pet owner. Adding the wrong medication can also lead to delays as they can't be mixed and you may need to do several large water changes before you can add the appropriate medication. The most common disease seen by tropical fish enthusiasts is white spot. This parasite has a life cycle with a free living stage, as well as the distinctive cysts that live on the fish and give the appearance of grains of sugar or salt sprinkled on the fish's body or fins. This protozoan parasite is easily dealt with by treating with a medication that targets the free swimming stage and the temperature can be increased by a couple of degrees to speed up the process. As the parasites damage the fish, it's worth using a medication that protects against any secondary infections as well. Other microscopic parasites can be harder to see, but produce a distinctive milky sheen to the fish, known as velvet. Like white spot, a targeted treatment is the best solution. Fishes are generally good healers and quickly recover from fin or body damage. Occasionally, Wounds can become infected by bacteria or fungi, and these secondary infections can appear milky or fuzzy. In these cases, it's best to treat with a product that targets fungal growths. Sometimes infection can be harder to spot and problems can be internal. If your fish show signs of bloating, often accompanied by buoyancy issues, try an antibacterial remedy that targets internal issues. If your fish show signs of itching and rub themselves against the decor with no obvious signs of infection apart from rapid gill rate, then it may be flukes. The good news is that in a healthy aquarium, parasites and pathogens are kept at bay by the fish's immune system. It's perfectly possible to keep fish for years without any disease outbreaks in a well-maintained aquarium. Statistically, very few fish die of disease in well-maintained aquaria. After a quick water test to establish that conditions are suitable, we're going to add new fish. When we discussed algae, I mentioned that there were fish that can help to control it. 
Today, we're going to add some fish to help with the cleaning. They might not swim about in the open, but these bristlenose plex, or ancestrous, will earn their keep by grazing algae from the glass and any hard surface. They're members of a large family with some very exotic relatives, including a number that grow far too large for this tank. Their hard work shouldn't be rewarded with a poor meal, and they'll do well on the algae-based tablets we bought for the platys last time. Ancestrous are easy to breed and the males do all the work. Their beard is thought to mimic a brood of babies, making the female more likely to trust him with the care of her offspring. Catfish are a very diverse group, and we're adding some that are the perfect community fish. Corridorus are shoaling cats available in a huge range of natural forms and use their whiskers to forage through the bottom of the tank looking for anything edible. As such, they're great at finding the crumbs that other fish miss, but earn their keep on their looks and character alone. We've gone for a group of three-lined cories that are often mistaken for a rarely imported relative. It's a common mistake to see them labelled as Julii catfish. Whatever you call them, these are a great choice and will provide hours of entertainment. These are added in exactly the same way as the previous fish. And as usual, I'm adding a dose of bacterial supplement to boost the all-important filter bacteria. All that remains for now is to monitor your water quality and watch as your new fish settle in. It might take the catfish a little longer to settle, they're very sensitive to vibrations and they're more active at night, but soon you'll see them at feeding time and then around the clock as they get more confident. Enjoy your fish and I'll see you next time.